Let's roll. This is Sports Rage. I am Gable Morenci, the pips, the players, the hustlers, the people that bust them, and everybody else in between. Let's do this thing. The Monday Night Meltdown has begun. So is the National Football League's free agent feeding frenzy. But we'll get into that uh, in a couple of minutes. We got a full house on the program this evening. Let's start off, though, uh, on the hardwood as the countdown of madness is on. Teams are punching their tickets into the dance. Samford uh, cashes uh, their ticket to the dance. They beat East Tennessee uh, State uh, tonight. James Madison also going to the NCAA tournament after routing Arkansas State this evening. We've got more college basketball uh, going on through the night. We're at the half right now. St. Mary's and Santa Clara. We're going to focus in on the West, uh, the uh, the West Coast Conference this evening. The WCC, as we've got St. Mary's and Santa Clara at the half right now, which means we're going to have a late tip off of uh, this evening. San Francisco and Gonzaga. It feels automatically like St. Mary's and Gonzaga are on a collision course. St. Mary's started off the game a little bit slow, but they're leading 33-26 uh, right now at the half. They're currently laying 12 and a half points. The total is down to 130 and a half right now. Northern Kentucky off to a strong start uh, tonight as uh, the Horizon League. Uh, we're in the semifinals of Horizon League. Northern Kentucky up 20 to 10 on Wisconsin, Milwaukee early in this game. Denver is up on Nebraska, Omaha. You know, you got to love this time of the year when suddenly Portland State and Montana games actually mean something. And they all do uh, mean something uh, tonight. But we're going to focus in on the uh, the Gonzaga-San Francisco game from a betting uh, perspective, although we've got something really interesting going on right now in the Mile High City. Shout out to everybody joining us on Sirius XM Channel 159 on the Sports Grid Radio Networks. The Toronto Raptors uh, rolling. Uh, right now, the Denver Nuggets. The Raptors were getting 17 and a half points. And I saw that and I was like, all right, this is just ridiculous right now. It was like 14 and a half last night, 15 and a half, 16, and it was all the way up to 17 and a half. It's like, okay, you know, now that's just ridiculous. But I was caught up in the college stuff. And speaking of ridiculous, I don't like the term bad beat, but like I'm the king of this stuff. Like, like really, I might have to start using the term bad beat. Is it a bad beat or is it a bad bet? <laughs> Although, right, can't blame other people for your own losses, even if, you know, you can't make this up. I had over, I had over 145 in the Samford Eastern Tennessee State game, and it was a track meet, all right? Like, it's sailing over the number. I even played it in-game, like, 163 and a half and stuff. And then suddenly, of course, you know, both teams started to play defense. There was a, you know, spot, um, it, you know, winner was going to the dance, so it really got intense, and the referees, the referees started to let a lot go. It was like a street ball game. It was like it was a lot of fun to watch. So I got over 145. They're like 139 with like three minutes left, type of deal. And I sort of look, and I'm like, this is not really going to happen, is it? And then lo and behold, tick, tick, miss, brick, miss, 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 and I'm like, there's no way I can't. And then they got to like 143. Okay. I needed two points in like 30 seconds. Both teams combined to miss five consecutive free throws. Speaking of which, I have a Wembenyama player prop to the over tonight. He just missed a free throw. Like, dear God. Like, man. So, we, you know, you, you almost got to prepare yourself for this with March Madness coming up and all these conference tournaments, right? I mean, hell, even NBA players are going to miss free throws, but five in a row, all right? Five in a row. I ended up getting a push. Because there was like eight free throws taken in the last like 25 seconds. It was like a foul fest at the end. And they went like one for seven. Eastern Tennessee State, like these kids were crying after they lost the game and stuff because they came so close to going to the tournament. Well, you know why you're not going to the tournament? Because you can't hit an effing free throw, bro. <laughs> like they literally will look up the box score after they must have missed like 14 of them. Like, at one point, it was 11. I caught it. I, I, it was like, yeah, whatever. Like, it was up to, like, 14, 15 missed free throws. They lost the game by, like, five or something, four or five. And they literally missed. Like, dude, they were down by six with, like, 50 seconds left. They missed four free throws in a row. <laughs> like, they could have cut the lead to two, but they, they, they it was the same dude, too. He missed, like, four in a row. Now here's Wembenyama. Can he hit the little uh, jumper? No. Nope. Doesn't go in for us. Uh, so we'll get that player prop uh, up to date. So 
whatever. I you, know, you got to sort of accept it. You bet these like crazy games. Like I lost a money line parlay tonight uh, with Weber State. These guys were rolling early. Like they got absolutely massacred in the second half. Season over, just like that. Season over. Nickel State is rolling. Texas A&M Commerce. I knew that was going to happen this evening. I did jump in on Stony Brook. Uh, I got Stony Brook plus nine and a half against Hofstra. Hofstra were big favorites in this game, but Stony Brook are good. Stony Brook are a covering machine. And there's a lot of pressure on these higher seeds, like in these games. You'll notice a lot of these games are close, man. Like, I know James Madison smoked Arkansas State tonight, but a lot of these games are close. And, you know, it's not like they're all blindly close, but sort of teams, like there's some, some of these teams are just ATS monsters. So we got nine and a half with Stony Brook. They're leading 37-36 outright right now, but there's a lot of basketball left. There's 15 and a half left in that game. As far as the second half of St. Mary's and Santa Clara, I think we're going to get there to the 130 and a half. It's 130 and a half right now. They put up uh, 59 points. It was kind of a slow start. I would expect things to pick up a little bit, although we know St. Mary's, they don't really play at a very quick pace, but 130 and a half points is not a lot of points. There should be a ton of points in this Wisconsin-Milwaukee-Northern Kentucky game, but the total closed at 154 and a half. I wanted to see it play out a little bit before I chase that big number. It's sort of right on the number right now. It's 155 and a half in game. I like Northern Kentucky, but I didn't love it. And I'll tell you what, Wisconsin-Milwaukee right now getting six and a half points is kind of attractive just because Northern Kentucky are up by six right now. Yet these Horizon League games are super close. We saw that tonight early. We caught, we cast a ticket with Cleveland State uh, this evening. Kyle Hunter's going to step up and join us. From Kyle Hunter picks, sharp dude, especially when it comes to college basketball. So he's a good guy to have on the show uh, tonight. Kyle Hunter will step up and then. Ranger Reddit, Cam Stewart, still off. Uh, hopefully, we'll, Cam will be back uh, later uh, in the week. George Kurtz in the house. Uh, the saving lot of stuff to run the gauntlet with George Kurtz. We haven't even gotten to the National Football League craziness uh, yet. And there's a lot of stuff uh, to break down. Mo Khan steps up and then Mo, no doubt, will um, we'll break down the NFL with our boy Mo Khan uh, this evening. Uh, but college basketball takes center stage. Everybody talks about March Madness and the NCAA tournament. It's really only cool for the first two days. The Thursday and Friday is off the hook. And then after that, it's there's less basketball on TV than it normally is on a regular season Saturday. So it's like, oh, madness. Yeah, it's two days. All right. And really, the most basketball that's going to be on, if you're a college basketball fan, is now. Right? Like this week, it's just all day long. There's a million college games going on. And we're betting them all, baby. This is Sports Rage. Bra- Points on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And, and these guys are taking up shots. I, I mean, it's just like that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can be part of the sports betting ads. Now what's interesting is there is technically a carve out that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible games. So you could still have a Connor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire. 
only on Sports Grid. 4.22, the fat man alive. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40 yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh, somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh, ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. This is Sports Ridge. I am Gable Morantz. You know, Monday Night Meltdown has begun. Series XM Channel 159, the Sports Grid Radio and Television Network. Shout out to all of our television affiliates, platforms, apps, smart TVs, and everything else in between, whatever platform you are watching us on. The uh, the Warriors are up by eight right now on the Spurs. There's about two minutes uh, left. We have our eye on this game because we played some props, three-player props in the game uh, tonight. Straight fire, baby. Uh, Kaminga over 20 and a half points. He's got 22. Uh, Victor Wembanyama over 22 and a half. He's got 26. We played Wembanyama over 11 and a half rebounds at plus 110. He's got 14 uh, rebounds. And another prop that's just killing it right now, Luka Doncic. Seven straight triple doubles. That's right, triple doubles. It was plus 175 tonight for Doncic to record the triple double. He did it again against the Chicago Bulls uh, this evening. So we've got NBA basketball going on. We'll keep our eye on this, but it's all about college right now. Let's bring in a man that's uh, all over the college hardwood on a nightly basis. Kyle Hunter steps up and in. Kyle Hunter picks. Good to see you, Kyle. Uh, It's that time of the year, my man. How you doing tonight? Doing well. Busy time of the year, but we love it. That's for sure. Yeah, I always say, I was just saying a couple of minutes ago, this week's actually crazier than next week. Like, March Madness isn't really madness. It's Thursday and Friday, and then there's actually less games on the Saturday and Sunday, and they're there for than there was in a regular season even. Conference tournament week is just off the hook. So let me just throw a couple of games at you that are going on uh, right now and see if you had any pregame thoughts on them. Uh, the Horizon League is always um, – usually the best team in the Horizon League doesn't win uh, their conference yeah. tournament. Wild game tonight with Cleveland State – uh, fun game. I took them plus the points, and uh, the game went over the number uh, there. I like Northern Kentucky, but not quite enough to pull the trigger on it. Did you have any thoughts on Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and Northern Kentucky? And as we speak, it's 29-20 right now uh, for the Norse. 29-21, they just, uh, Wisconsin's hit a free throw. Six and a half minutes left in the first half. What are your thoughts on this one, if any? I mean, Northern Kentucky's had enough success in this tournament that, you know, I'm not going to bet against them. It's either back them or or a pass, but I will say I do have a future on Oakland plus 310. So I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow night if Northern Kentucky, you know, obviously there's going to be potential to, to lock in profit no matter what. I think that would be a good matchup. Oakland, you know, was fortunate to go ahead and win that game today. Uh, Cleveland State had a shot there at the end. But like you said, the Horizon League is pretty unpredictable. Um, you know, Northern Kentucky has been the team that's been consistently at least getting to the title game pretty consistently. Uh, year after year. So uh, it seems like even when they're a bit shorthanded and maybe not uh, as highly thought of, they still find a way to get there. Well, speaking of getting to the title game, St. Mary's and Gonzaga, they might as well just, you know, 
this is their game. They're always on a collision course. Normally, it's Gonzaga that comes in, and St. Mary's is the desperate one trying to get into the NCAA tournament. It's a little bit different uh, this year, but Gonzaga have dialed things up a little bit. Before we get to the Gonzaga game, though, St. Mary's right now up 42-31 on Santa Clara. They're laying 13 and a half. You know, it's kind of a strange number. The in-game total is currently 128 and a half. That might feel just a little light considering what the original number was, but there hasn't been a lot of fouls. What were your thoughts on Santa Clara and St. Mary's tonight? I think Santa Clara is a decent team. They're well coached. Uh, they're just not in the same you know stratosphere as St. Mary's and Gonzaga. We know that those two teams are just far and above everybody else. It would have been kind of interesting, Gabe, if BYU had still been there because BYU has kind of taken that big step forward, played well in the Big 12. Uh, but, you know, St. Mary's, very good. Randy Bennett's a fantastic coach. You, you couldn't name five coaches better than Randy Bennett as far as maximizing talent. Um, they're very good at salting away games when they have a lead. So it would surprise me if St. Mary's, uh, you know, has trouble here the rest of the way. Now watch Gabe; they'll probably just blow it or something. But you know, I mean, <laughs> you know how you know how it is. Uh, sometimes you say something like that, it can kind of jinx it. But I do think oh, St. I Mary's teams will all take the time. business. Yeah, I mush teams all the time by praising them, and then like they they can't score for like ten <laughs> minutes after I do it. But St. Mary's have them right where they want them right now. They're like a football team with a lead. Now they're just going to run the ball. Right, they've got right. a double-digit lead. So, as far as the Dons tonight and Gonzaga, Gonzaga have dialed things up, and I think they're they're not going to be an easy out uh, in a tournament. This Gonzaga team, but what do you make of this number here tonight against the Dons? And uh, I'm curious your take on the total. But let's start off with the side. What do you think about this game? So, I think San Francisco is a good team. They have a lot of talent. But if you look at what San Francisco's done, they've really beaten up on the bad teams. They've ran up the score quite a bit on the bad teams. They haven't really beaten anybody that good. Um, you know, do we think they're going to start doing that in this one? I mean, Gonzaga really can't afford to have a bad loss. I know they've had some good performances here of late, but they don't want to take any chances. Um, Gonzaga has really turned a corner here a bit of late. If you look at their offensive efficiency numbers earlier in the season it's like you know this didn't look like the old gonzaga offense and now in the conference 1.255 points per possession if you just look at like the last six or eight games i believe it's over 1.3 they've just been fantastic as far as they changed up some of the starting lineup uh they've got ben Gregg playing some more he spaces out the floor they've got big guys that can shoot uh they, they've got guards playing better not turning over the basketball much at all I think this Gonzaga offense is going to score on San Francisco. Now, I think the pace is also going to be really quick. Uh, this is interesting, Gabe, because, you know, a lot of these totals have been moving down because in conference tournament week, we've seen a lot of unders in general. This one's actually gone up a little bit. I think that's probably the right move. Now, would I bet over 150 and a half? It's kind of right borderline whether I uh, really like the over at that point, but I would lean over. I think there's going to be plenty of pace here. And, uh, you know, where this game's being played, it's not some crazy backdrop or anything where there's going to be a bunch of unders. Uh, teams have actually yeah, you read scored my mind pretty on well. That. Yeah, yeah, this the, has been the Gonzaga players, bro. The Gonzaga yeah. players know the Orleans Casino like oh, better yeah. than security, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm like, if you're a player on Gonzaga, it's like, you ever been to the Orleans? Like, yeah, yeah, I've been to the Orleans. Like, yeah, I've stayed there. I played there. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And, I mean, you know, we've seen some high-scoring games already in this uh, conference uh, tournament. San Francisco, it's pretty misleading if you look at their game from the other night, too. San Francisco had, like, 25 points nine minutes into the game. Portland couldn't score. Uh, no no uh, issue there, so they just kind of shut it down. They can't shut it down in this one on offense. We know that. They're going to have to score. I think they'll be playing from behind. I, I think over would be my lean in that game. You know, I'm more I'm more inclined to want to talk myself out of the underdogs in, in these games. Like a good example is I took Stony Brook plus plus the mm -hmm. points uh tonight. But uh, something you said about Gonzaga, and I agree. Listen, they've they've dialed things up to turn the corners, you stated, but you know, sometimes in the past, these you know, Gonzaga would come in and be like, Well, it doesn't matter if they cover or not. You know what I mean? They're thirty and two and they've got a bigger picture. They don't. They they they're getting in, but at the same point in time, I think Few just wants to keep this going, almost like a fighter, yeah. just like next step, next step. So they come in just like full strength, full steam ahead, coming into the NCAA tournament by kicking St. Mary's ass last Saturday, 
by doing it again, by blowing through San Francisco, blowing through St. Mary's again, and sort of reminding everybody that Gonzaga still exists because people left them for dead earlier in the year. Yeah, I, I mean, they've definitely been in great form. I guess the question mark is, and I, I think you're probably right as far as this tournament, the question mark is, is it going to make them go far in the NCAA tournament? You know, because it's still going to be a pretty big step up. They won at Kentucky. That was a great win at St. Mary's. I still don't know that I trust Gonzaga to make like a really deep run in the NCAA tournament, but that's kind of a different question. Do you think BYU can make it to the Sweet Six? The BYU could win a couple of games. I know they're kind of yeah. home orientated, but big team can shoot the three. I don't think they're just going to wilt because they're not at home. I actually think they're, they can go on a little run this team in a tournament. What do you think? Yeah, and they won at Kansas. I mean, I know Kansas hadn't played great of late, but you know, winning at Kansas is not easy to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they're set up well. They have a good coach. Pope is underrated. So it wouldn't surprise me if they can get to the Sweet 16 either. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying they're going to the Final Four or anything like that. All right, All right we'll do one more segment with Kyle on the other side. We'll talk more college basketball, talk some futures, take a look at the overnight numbers, and uh, tonight's games as well. Bring it. on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And, and these guys are taking up shots. I, I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can be part of these sports betting ads. Now what's interesting is there is technically a carve out that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible gaming. So you could still have a Connor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40-yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh, somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh, ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
The Monday Night Meltdown continues. This is Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Moransky, Sirius XM Channel 159 and more. Sports Grid Radio and Television Networks. Uh, Hofstra is up 46-44 right now on Stony Brook. Seven and a half minutes left. Low scoring game. St. Mary's um, starting to pull away even more on Santa Clara right now. 53-37 to with 11 and a half minutes uh, left in that game. We're kicking it with Kyle Hunter right now from Kyle Hunter Picks. Uh, dot com and uh, we've got the uh, bigger conferences set to tip off we've got the big 12 tomorrow the acc but a conference this year that's been a lot of fun and more competitive than ever uh the mountain west uh the mountain west college basketball season has been a very interesting one uh this year even unlv have played good basketball over the last uh, couple of weeks a strong run to end the season it's funny i remember years ago i was living in vegas and And I forget what coach it was that basically said, you know, the Mountain West tournament shouldn't just be in Vegas all the time. They have an advantage. And Steve Alford was a coach of uh, New Mexico at the time. He said, well, they haven't won in like 20 years or something. He goes, I got no problem with it. (laughs) It was such like a cold diss at UNLV that people are like, yeah, don't worry. If you think about it, right? Like they have this, it's a big conference. They have this supposed home city advantage, but they really don't. Everybody likes to travel to Vegas and all that. But UNLV haven't sucked uh, over the last month or so. We'll, we'll, we'll admit that. But this should be fun. And there's only so many spots to go around for the NCAA tournament, uh, Kyle, right? It's a lot of teams, and there's only so many spots. So as competitive this conference has been, every game is going to be critical uh, for these teams. Should be a uh, great week of basketball in Las Vegas. Oh, we got to get Kyle's audio back. There we go. We got you back. Oh, still muted. We got an audio issue uh, with Kyle here. We'll get that uh, resolved. Are we good, Kyle? Nope. All right. See uh, see what you guys can uh, do. We'll get this. Uh, we were smooth. We were sailing smoothly, too. Almost too, uh, almost too smooth. It's like a basketball game is sailing over the number. And then people start hitting, uh, uh, start taking bricks. So looking at the numbers here for this Mountain West uh, tournament, San Diego State, or you know, they're they're the team to beat, but they're not invincible, right? And we've seen this conference all year long how close these games are. So this really is going to be a wild run uh, in Vegas this week. San Diego State are favorites at plus two fifty. Utah State are the second choice at plus 375. Nevada are plus 450. Boise State are 6 to 1. Speaking of the UNLV running Rebels, the Rebs are 6 to 1 as well, plus 600, which for them is actually a step up. Like normally they're not <laughs> normally they're not like the four team um listed to potentially win. You got Colorado State, you got New Mexico. Look, all you need to know is New Mexico is 7 to 1. New Mexico are a dangerous team. And then you got Wyoming's 150 Air Force, uh, Fresno, and San Jose State. I think we got Kyle back, uh, right, uh, Kyle? See, I just went over the odds uh, here. This isn't the same sort of dominant San Diego State is way better than everybody else. Like we've kind of seen in past years, they're the favorites uh, here. What do you think about this tournament? I think they should be favorites, but I think they might be favored by a little bit too much. Uh, you know, there's so many teams that could win this game. If I was going to pick one conference tournament I wanted to watch this week, this would be it. I know most people would say this isn't as big of a conference tournament. I like the under-the-radar games anyways. But, uh, you know, six, seven teams could win this thing, and it wouldn't be totally shocking. I mean, you were talking about UNLV. Dedon Thomas is a problem. He's going to be really good. Uh, he's already really good. But I, I don't think UNLV is quite good enough to consistently win games to win the tournament. I kind of like Boise State here. Nobody has an easy path. Like you, if you sit here, you try to break down these conference tournaments, you say, well, who has an easy path? You don't get an easy path to the Mountain West Conference Tournament because there's too many good teams. You know, there's landmines all in the way here. I think you got to look toward either Nevada or Boise State. You stay away. Uh, this is a spot where this is a Boise State team that has played pretty well on the road for years now. Leon Rice, I think, is a good coach. Boise State, they just finished the year with a really nice win on the road. To me, I want a team that's not home dependent. 
I think Boise State is that. Nevada is another one that I could argue for because of their peaking at the right time here of late. And Gabe, I'll say this. I think Nevada could be a decent long shot in the NCAA tournament just to make a run. I'm not saying they're going to win the thing. You know how that goes. But, uh, you know, if you want to take a team to reach the Final Four or take them to win it and then be able to hedge out at a profit, I think uh, somebody in the Mountain West is going to make a run again, whether it's going to be San Diego State or not. There were too many guys saying for years the Mountain West sucks. You know, they get to the the NCAA tournament. They can't win. I think this year they're going to win again. I think this conference is a lot better than people realize. You're right. Mountain West has struggled in the NCAA tournament in the past. Yeah, it's a conference that every time it sort of gets going and it gets momentum, teams leave, right? This is almost like a different era of right now where somehow, and I talked about this last week or I brought it up before, who would have imagined if like we would have, if someone would have told you, Kyle, like let's say 10, 15 years ago that, yeah, you know, when we get to 2024, the Pac-12 won't exist anymore, and the Mountain West is going to be this big power, right? And, <laughs> like, the Mountain West, I'm not calling them a big power, but they stabilized, you know what I mean? Like, with all the rating that was going on around college sports and stuff, they survived the purge, so to speak. They survived. They'll probably end up with the Beavers and the Cougars and the Antu, and they'll end up getting a little bit stronger. But I was just thinking back to, like, they used to have TCU, and they brought up uh, BYU, right? They used to have BYU uh, as well, and, you know, with Jimmer Fredette and stuff like that. So the Mountain West has always been a fun conference. But as stated now, like, there's this, man, very competitive. I like where you're going with that. There's no value with San Diego State. So you're saying Boise State or Nevada. Yeah, I think Boise State or Nevada would be my choice. Now, I will say, I don't think I'd put a lot of money on anybody in this one because I think it's pretty wide open. I think uh, drama, you know, just wanting to watch as a fan, this is at the top of the list. And uh, I think we'll see a lot of tight games. Maybe some underdogs could cover the spread here in this because I think there's a lot of feisty teams. Uh, Think about the teams that are kind of right on the cut line. New Mexico's right there. Uh, New Mexico's a pretty good team. They didn't finish the season that well. But, you know, if you're catching points with teams like that, they're not going to give up easily. I think there could be a lot of tight games. Kyle Hunter uh, kicking it with us. Let me do a quick uh, update uh, here right now with the scores. I'll throw. Uh, let me just throw a couple other tournaments at you here. Mm-hmm. Florida Atlantic last year went on that run. Who's the who's that sort of mid tier? You know, we're not talking about the 150 to one shots, but so Florida Atlantic are plus 175. There's no value there. And what I like about these bets, Kyle, they're pretty short, right? They're future, these mini futures. They're a couple of days. Right? Right? You place the bet, and you know, you're going to win or lose uh, by the weekend when you play these conference tournament uh, futures. So SMU is 4-1. to one. Memphis are 6-1. to one. South Florida's uh, f- plus 500 right now. North Texas is plus 700. And then there's a drop-off to Charlotte. What do you think about the AAC here? Well, I think uh, South Florida is just not getting enough love again. I mean, this team has been covering spreads. I know they lost their last game, but Gabe, I think it might be good that they lost their last game because now they know they're not invincible. They won 15 in a row. Now they come in 15 and one in their last 16 games. That helps them in this tournament. I know it doesn't help them for the NCAA tournament because their at large chances have gotten worse, but they have to win this thing. And Abdur Rahim, fantastic coach, USF. First in the conference in defensive efficiency. I think the four or five matchup against Memphis or UAB isn't really a bad one either. Uh, Memphis, we know they're capable. They can play great. They can play terrible. You don't know what you're going to get from Memphis. Uh, Abdur Rahim, I trust him more as a coach than Penny Hardaway. Uh, I think the the value at the bottom is tough too because you've got Charlotte, SMU, quality teams, but they're going to have to play each other, and then they have to play Florida Atlantic. And, I mean, you know, Florida Atlantic's a deserving favorite. But, you know, uh, like you said, do you want to take the plus small price there on Florida Atlantic? I don't. You know, I, I'd rather try to take a, a price grab on a team that I think is very capable of getting to the final game. And then if you want to figure out what to do once you get that final game, then you can decide then. Yeah, exactly. South Florida could go on a deep run. and It's not bad having plus 500 in your back pocket. So we've just got it. We'll get you out of here in a couple of minutes. The Big 12 is such a great conference. There's so many good teams here. You can make the argument that there's value on the board with everybody almost except Houston and Iowa State right now at plus 275. And I am a big Houston fan. I think think they could win the national championship for real. 
But at the same point in time, it doesn't mean I would bet him at minus 120 to win a Big 12 tournament. We saw Baylor take them to overtime. Um, we saw Kansas beat them, et cetera, this year. So, you know, Houston are minus 120. Iowa State plus 275. Baylor 6-1. to one. Kansas 12-1. to one. BYU, who we were talking about, are 14-1. to one. Hell, Texas Tech 20-1. to one. Texas 30-1. to one. TCU 66-1. to one. What do you make in a Big 12? And do you think that there's – if you weren't going to bet Houston, would there be somebody else? I agree with you that I think Houston could cut down the nets uh, and win the NCAA tournament. I also would not take minus 120. Um, you know, this is a tough one because if Kansas – if I thought Kansas was healthy, I think I would take Kansas because we've seen them win this thing time after time. They'll self when they're doubted. They usually win. Uh, is Dickinson okay? McCullough has been banged up. I, I don't think it's worth the risk at this point based on that. But um, I think I would probably take Texas with a long shot. Just, you know, I, could they lose the first game? Of course. Uh, could they win several games? I think they could. So uh, I take the upside potential there. Yeah, another team that can play with anybody. That's what I like about Baylor going into the NCAA tournament, yeah. actually. In that 40 to 1 range, that you know what? They can play with anybody. All right? Doesn't mean they're going to win, but they can compete with anybody. Kyle, great stuff as always, my man. Thanks a lot, man. on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And, and these guys are taking up shots. I, I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can be part of the sports betting ads. Now what's interesting is there is technically a carve out that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible game. So you could still have a Connor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Alive. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40-yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh, somebody will uh, somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh, ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
one of the unlikely outcomes of the year going on right now in the National Basketball Association, the Denver Nuggets. Listen, the Nuggets shouldn't have been laying 17 and a half points to the Toronto Raptors, but the Raptors really aren't Raptors. Like they're like, what's, what's a baby Raptor? <laughs> they're like the little ones, like in Jurassic Park. You know, they're like the little cute ones. Like, dude, I'm a diehard Toronto Raptor fan. I don't know who the hell these guys are. I'm not saying I never heard of them. Like, I don't know no Nawara here and whatever, dude. Like, basically, if you're in the organization, you're getting a chance to play right now. They got, uh, they're without three, uh, what, four, four of their five starters. <laughs> so, so that's why they were getting 17. But they're actually winning the game, 93-79. I'm imagining they blow this, though. What's, um, what's Denver pay in game here? Denver pay plus 160. I don't like doing this because I'm, I'm a Raptor fan, but I think Denver, Jokic is going to get mad at some point, and Murray will start to hit some shots. It's plus one. Uh, oh, just dipped a plus 135 on me. Yeah, they're ki- oh, minus 115 now. They're killing me on this. As soon as I start talking about Denver, start hitting shots here. I'm going to put the same amount on Denver to win the game as I did on the Raptors. I got the Raptors plus nine and a half. I didn't take him at 17 and a half. I, I was watching the college. I was like, oh, man. So there's the run, 93-84. So the Raptors are going to blow this for sure. God, we were a day late, sec, a few seconds short. We could have gotten the plus 165. I got to tell you, there's certain, like, um, it's the network. I, I, when games are on, when I get them on Sportsnet, I'm, like, delayed more than I normally am. And it actually does get me at times. Like, with basketball, it has to be up to date. Like, when you're betting in-game, there's a big difference, right? Like, the the computer changes the number so often. Like, I tried to get this in right now, but in reality, as I saw plus 165 in the arena, they're hitting the shot. And I'm getting this, like, a couple of seconds late. And even the sports book, like, technology can only, like, travel so fast. That's why, I like, you know what I mean? The 5G is getting is better and stuff. Like, it's much faster than it used to be. Like, it is super fast and stuff now. But the cable companies aren't up to speed with, like, degenerate better speed <laughs> that you need. All right? That, 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 that's, uh, that, that's the thing. Like, football, it doesn't mean as much. You know, they don't change a number as much, right, in football. Like, the, 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 the point spread's not changing after every play in football. It'll change after the possession, right? If a team, like, punts or something, they might change it, you know, like half a point or a point and a half or something. But, like, baseball, it changes every pitch. Like, baseball, it like, I'm telling you right now, like, baseball, if you don't know, like, for every strike or ball, they add, like, five cents to it. Or a minus to it. Like, if you're watching and it's like, all right, it says plus 115. And then the team that's batting is plus 115. And strike one, it'll go to, like, uh, it'll go to plus 120. Strike two, plus 125. It really moves, like, five cents on each pitch. Hockey, they're insane. Hockey, we've talked about this with Sherapan in the past, and he's been in the room for this, in which he talked about, like, and it's true, the hockey algorithm is very soccer like. They don't it's not as they haven't like they haven't fine tuned it as much. And quite frankly, I don't think they care enough. Right? People don't bet enough hockey for them to care, right? To really sort of say, Well, we got a problem, like we're losing a lot. I don't think they're losing a lot, but hockey in game betting is pretty favorable to the better. Much more so than basketball. Basketball is like the worst in sport game to bet on. It really is, in the sense that the basketball, when you're betting in game, you're you're solely betting against the computer, like you really are. So it's like you think you have an advantage. Look, I got burnt betting an in game over. I thought it was a lock, didn't even come anywhere near close. But like the computer has no emotion, so it just sort of sticks to numbers. But you know, with hockey, hockey and MMA, hockey, MMA and boxing, and there's other ones too. Anybody that um, bets a lot knows what I'm talking about. Like, tennis is a wild one. Tennis is, like, serious, like, swings. Like, tennis, you win a game, like, it'll swing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, 45, like, just one, not the set, like, one game. It'll flip. Like, a serve will flip things, like, 25 cents and stuff. Tennis, 
really is a crazy in sport like betting betting uh experience but the thing with tennis with tennis in game betting i think you could really kill it like really really kill it and people do but tennis isn't a casual sport man like you got to know who these ukrainian girls are and there's some some 17 year old from lithuania and right you can't get caught off guard so like tennis if you're going to be a tennis better, you almost have to almost just be a tennis better. <laughs> like, there's so many players. You got the men's game, the women's game. There's so many players that you, you're not going to be, you know, like you really have to focus on it. I know some people that do like fighting in tennis. They like the individual sport type of deals. 98, 91 right now. Okay, we're going to get into all this NFL stuff, and I, I'm curious, too, just to hit refresh over and over and see these updated numbers. I know the Falcons are big-time favorites to win the division now. But one of the surprise moves, and I think we're going to start a new segment uh, on the show, um, The uh, what I think is the, the tweet of the day. What I see on Twitter is the tweet of the day. And what I saw today, so the Raiders signed, uh, the Raiders signed uh, Gardner Minshew. <laughs> This one, great account. Um, I love the NFL and I love the Simpsons. So it's a great account. Simpsons and uh, NFL. And uh, the Raiders going from Derek Carr to Jimmy G to uh, Gardner Minshew. Duff, Duff light, <laughs> Duff dry. <laughs> like, that, that's brilliant. That really is like, that really is just too good. It's like, <laughs> you got Derek Carr, he's Duff. And then Jimmy G comes in as Duff Light to Derek Carr. And now he's like, well, no, it's kind of new. Duff Dry. Kind of the same. Kind of the same, but different. Duff Dry. And from my experience, the dry al- the dry beers usually have more alcohol, right? <laughs> so maybe maybe that makes sense for Gardner Minshew. Uh, you know, I, just, I don't know what the Raiders are doing. At first, I thought... Yeah, you know, I don't. I think they like Aiden O'Connell, but you don't give Gardner Minshew twelve million dollars a year not to play. So evidently, the Raiders are going with Gardner Minshew. They're either going with Gardner Minshew, and Aiden O'Connell's going to be the backup, or they're going to throw Aiden O'Connell out of the bus and they're going to draft a quarterback. And Gardner Minshew will start like he did. Like it'll sort of be the indie thing all over again. But I don't think they do that. I think they think you know what Minshew's good enough. I don't think they're taking a quarterback now. But I also didn't, like, I've been right and I've been wrong with some of these things. All right? And we'll get into that. Like, I didn't think the Falcons would sign Kirk Cousins. Like, I I didn't think they would go that route. Even though I like the signing for them. I think think it makes complete sense for them. So, but NFL teams don't often do what makes complete sense. But put it this way. Lamar Jackson was willing to leave Baltimore. And word was, like, he was willing to go to Atlanta. Yet the Falcons weren't interested in Lamar Jackson because they didn't want to pay him $200 million for five years. And now they just turned around and gave Kirk Cousins $180 million for four years. Now, for the record, Kirk Cousins' deal is um, $100 million guaranteed. So, in essence, it's kind of a two-year deal if they want it to be. Right? Like, they don't have to pay him $180 million. I mean, we can get into the cap stuff and all that, but it's not, you know, the, the NFL is not guaranteed money. Right? That's so it's preposterously, ridiculously stupid that the NFLPA operates in a non guaranteed contract world. But a lot of these players have figured out, well, you're not going to guarantee it. So I'm just going to get as much money as I can up front. Saquon Barkley is a good example. He got a $37 million deal. It could be worth forty six um, with bonuses, and but he got twenty six million up front, right? And that's what it was all about for him. Who's going to pay me the most up front cash right now, right? So no matter what happens, whatever. Like Saquon Barkley get hurt in training camp and not play this year, he still got twenty six million dollars from them. Then they can't they can't touch that. So Kirk Cousins got a hundred. The Raptors really are blowing this. It's ninety eight ninety three right now. The Nuggets are actually minus 230 right now as we're starting the fourth quarter of play. Wow. Just like that. I talk about fluid markets. So, yeah, that was a great tweet. So, I think I want to start the uh, the tweet of the day. That, that was my favorite one today. That, that I did laugh out loud about. 
everybody tries to be funny, right? And everybody has the same damn gifts and memes and the same low-hanging fruit joke. But that that Simpsons one with the the Duff, Duff Light, Duff Dry was actually creative, smart, and funny. So uh, that's our tweet of the day. Now, what was not so smart was this kid that met John Jones and asked John Jones to kick him in the leg. And then not once, but twice, because he didn't have enough after the first one. Now, before you roll, I, before you roll, I don't understand people that do this stuff. You know, a good example is like I met JJ Watt at the Super Bowl. Didn't hang out with JJ Watt or anything. I ran in. It was like, hey, it was, you know what I mean? One of those type of deals. We, you know, we were on the elevator together and going up type of deal. And I didn't like. It never crossed my mind to say, hey JJ, you know what? It'd be really cool if you could sack me. Do you think you could tackle me? <laughs> you know. Like, honestly, like, if you met Austin Matthews, would you tell him, hey, Austin, will you take a slap shot at me, like, with, with, with a, uh, you know, well, I don't wear any equipment so I can injure myself and tell people and show a video about how I got injured because I'm a stupid idiot? So here's this dumbass kid that, for whatever reason, wanted to get kicked by John Jones. Let's see how it went. Harder. Harder. All right, there he is a couple hours later in the hospital. I hope that worked. I hope it was worth the hits. The whole thing is, like, we're not, like, saying, oh, you're so cool you did this. We're like, you're an idiot. Like, no one thinks you're cool. Like, you don't even think you're so cool in the hospital now, do you? (laughs) Like, Like, why? So what? Like, oh, you got a bunch of TikTok hits or something like that? Why? I gotta tell you, once I spilt a beer on Chuck Liddell's crotch. True story. It was at uh, Palace Station in Vegas. We were doing a show. It was a crazy night. It was like Heath Herring, Frank Mir, Phil Baroni, Chuck Liddell, and um, Chuck Liddell was sitting. I remember. I'll never forget. He was sitting to the right of me. We had like a table, and there was a bunch of beers and stuff. And you know, I moved my arms around. And blah blah blah. <laughs> I swung my hand, and I knocked a beer like directly on Chuck Liddell's crotch. So it looked like he like he leaked his pants type thing. Of all people, Chuck Liddell. And he just looks over at me, he goes, Marancy, you stupid idiot. And he punches me in the arm. <laughs> but not like, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, you idiot. Like kind of, ha ha, like bang. He goes, hey, you're going to pay for that. And he punches me in the arm. <laughs> he did it jokingly. Like he wasn't like he wasn't trying to hurt me or anything. He just sort of did it like poof. He just kind of like oh, you're gonna pay for that. Boom, hit me in the arm. I swear to God, guys. Like it's like five hours later. I was in my hotel room. Like damn man, my arm man. <laughs> I was like freaking Chuck Liddell punched my arm man. I didn't feel too good, bro. Right? Like uh, like he didn't even try. Right? So no, I'm not going up to John Jones and asking him to kick my leg so I can go to the hospital after. I've already kicked my own leg and gone to the hospital. I don't need John Jones to do it. This is Portrait. on the road in college basketball is an absolute landmine. I would not do it. I won't do it the rest of the year. I'm done doing that because it just consistently loses. I mean, three possessions in a nine-point game in which the opposition now is the clock, not the actual team you're facing, right? Right, right. And, and these guys are taking up shots. I, I mean, it's just like, that's why it's the NBA. In-game live, prime time, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Athletes in Canada, Wayne Gretzky, Connor McDavid, no longer can be part of the sports betting ads. Now, what's interesting is there is technically a carve-out 
that will still let these athletes and celebrities appear in sportsbook ads, but it's only if those ads are slanted toward responsible gaming. So you could still have a Conor McDavid saying, hey, bet responsibly on TV in Ontario. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. 4.22, the fact. Man alive. The guy just made himself a whole lot of money, did he not? By uh, by now holding the record for the fastest 40 yard dash. But if it's one thing we know is that doesn't translate into quality football players in the NFL. So uh somebody will uh somebody will bite and overdraft him because he simply uh ran faster than everyone else. It's just rinse and repeat. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Hoffs are in trouble right now. 62-59. We're on Stony Brook plus the points. So uh, Stony Brook is up 62-59. There's seven seconds left right now. hofstra has got the ball, though. So um, we'll keep our eye on this. The Raptors are up 103-102 on the Nuggets. We got a close one going on here. We told you to jump in on the Nuggets on the money line. They're now minus 340. It's pretty crazy. Uh, Santa Clara. Santa Clara and uh, St. Mary's moving in right now. At the end of the game, moving in on the total as well. We told you guys the over 128 and a half was light at halftime. It's uh, 75-59 right now with a minute left uh, in this game. St. Mary's are about to win. St. Mary's are about to cover under a minute left, and they're bleeding the clock right now as we speak. So uh, we got George Kurtz going to join us in a couple of minutes. They'll clear the court here at the Orleans. And then we've got uh, Gonzaga and the San Francisco Dons coming up a little bit uh, later on. I think Gonzaga are going to pull away in this game, and I think the game's going to go over the number. I think Gonzaga, like, they they want to start to dial it up a notch and play their best basketball. They basically have two more games left before the NCAA tournament, right? Win this game, win the, uh, you know, win the conference championship against St. Mary's after, and then that's it, into the tournament. So I would expect um, Gonzaga to really play well. Uh, tonight and punch San Francisco in the mouth. The Dons are are a good team, but like Kyle Hunter, who joined us earlier a couple of minutes ago, we were talking about San Francisco sort of racked up big routes on bad teams this year, and I think they're just going to be in a little bit over their heads. Again, let's just be real. Like St. Mary's and Gonzaga, they're just, you know, it's like fire and ice. They're on a collision course, and we see St. Mary's handling their business uh, right now. Now, I told you guys I thought that Wisconsin-Milwaukee would get back in the game with Northern Kentucky. It's a four-point game right now. There's 13 minutes left. They were just getting six and a half. But I, got to, I should have bet it instead of talking because it just moved to four and a half. But I'm expecting this game to come down to the wire. And at some point, we're going to have to jump in on the in-game over here. I'm just waiting, and let's, let's do it now at the 154 and a half. Let's roll. Over 154 and a half. 